know what kind of rolls I really love? Hmm. Random ones. <laughs> so if you random roll me, I'm good. Okay. Don't Rick roll me. The first can thing you, I wanted to talk about was the special, sort yes, of. Yes. Like, can you talk about the genesis? How, like, did they ask you to do a special where you're like, I, I have actually enough have had that special in my back pocket for at least three years. But I didn't want to do a special until I had something that I felt was special. My stand-up is improvised. Like I literally, if I were to be playing the improv tonight and doing an hour, I literally would have nothing prepared. But I wrote the special and I wanted a beginning, a middle, and end. I wanted feeling, I wanted content. I wanted it to be about something, not just, oh, I'm doing a special. And um, so I filmed the first one, I filmed the film two in a night, and I nailed it. Second one, I improvised at least half the time. That is the special. The very little that I used from the first show. Comedy is so personal, just like music can be, but even more so comedy. What makes a person laugh? And any comedian who's even good has a portion of themselves coming out. Great ones, you leave with a piece of them. I'm uh, Jeff Garland. I'm also Alyssa's cousin. I, uh, I'm a comedian. I don't really uh, tell uh, jokes. I, I tell stories about the way that I feel about things, you know, just things that happen. Not really just stories. I'm a totally different comedian. Back then, I, I had a set. I stuck to the set. That we filmed those in San Francisco, and that was actually me as an actor. Want me to explain that? Yes, I will. We did two shows that night. We filmed the the room, the roof. I mean, the ceiling was high. High ceilings are bad for comedy. And whatever the vibe was in that room, not good. And first show, I didn't do very well. So I know I'm being filmed, so I make a decision uh, in between shows that I'm going to act like I'm killing. Mm -hmm. And so the second show I went out and I performed as if everything worked perfectly, and it didn't. The director allowed me to be involved in the editing, and we put together a half-hour special that looks like, oh, he had a great set. A uh, spring break in Fort Lauderdale. 250,000 kids here for the sole purpose of partying. <laughs> I got uh, told by my agent that I had a part in the movie Spring Break. I get there, and I, it's not a part. I'm an extra. I played crazy gut-gut and I smashed beer cans in my head and did belly flops, and I kept on saying to them, hey, um, uh, give me some lines, let me, you know, and they didn't, but they were all very nice to me, and then when the DVD came out, it, uh, it of course, highlighted me. And then my agent did it to me again. They said, oh, you got a part in Scarface. I go to the set, I find out I'm an extra. You know, and on Scarface, I'm with all the extras, and I'm like, ah, I'm going to leave. Why are you leaving? I go, because I'm, I'm going to be big. Oh, I'm not an extra. You, and I'm, I, by the way, I'm 20 years old this time saying this to these people. Uh, oh, what an arrogant bastard I was. But you are in RoboCop 3. I am in RoboCop 3, yes. That is an, an early role of mine. And I talk about it. Yes, I do talk about it in the special. You know, that was kind of rude. That was not rude. I don't have to do a rude. stop and chat with stop him. Stop and chat. You always have these rules He's, and the uh, phrasing. Stop and chat. So Larry David and I, he is my mentor, one of my best friends, my boss, the person I respect most, like on every level. So when it's being conceived every season, I'm, I'm well aware of it. That's why when I signed up for the Goldbergs, before Curb was even coming back, I had it carved out in my Goldbergs contract that if Curb comes back, I'm allowed to do it. Did you think when you started doing Curb 20 years ago that it would still be an ongoing concern? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, when we did the special, which was 1999, I didn't think it would be anything more than a one-off thing. First day of filming, Larry said to me, wouldn't this be great as a series? And in my mind, I'm going, well, I said yes, but I'm thinking, yeah, Larry David is going to go on camera now full time, and I'm going to be in a series with him. Wow. It changed my life. Curve is, is interesting because it seems like it 
it exists sort of at its own pace and its own schedule. Like when you say something like the Goldbergs, like that's well, there's two differences. Yeah. There's the difference between the two. One is uh, commercial, albeit corporate comedy. You know, what I mean, it's warm. People love it, but it's done this way, and it's done about the money, about selling ad time. There's a whole array of things. HBO is about only create. I mean, look, yes, money, subscribers, but they're in interested in the quality of the programming for the most part. There's some things I go, what were you thinking? But uh, Larry David from Seinfeld is extraordinarily rich. Therefore, his only motivation to do Curb Your Enthusiasm is, in fact, can I do something funny and interesting? And so when we come back, it's because he's got a great idea. So it's 100% organic, and HBO, being HBO, goes with that. We've had more interest in this work than any other photographer. There's one particular that I bought, which I love. The composition is slightly off to me, and I think that's why I like it. I started in photography uh, loving street photography. I produced a movie called Finding Vivian Mayer that I, that I put together, and that's about a woman. Uh, a, it was nominated for an Academy Award, Best Documentary, and um, it's about a woman who was a nanny and went on to be one of the great street photographers, not in her lifetime, after she passed away. I love street photography. That being said, I don't have much anonymity when I walk through the farmer's market with my camera. But here's what I do have. For example, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Larry David, one of my closest friends, my coworker, he's with me. I have my camera in my hand almost all the time. I get intimate photos of people that other people do not get. And I'm hopeful and curious as to how people react. Hi, this is Dr. Shirley, and what the announcement just said, well, I really mean it. I'm here to talk about your problems and your concerns. Anything goes, so let's not be shy, because you're among friends. I was a straight talk with Dolly Parton. Yeah, yes. That was shot in Chicago. That was shot in Chicago. I got it while I was in Second City. She was a dream. She was the nicest lady. I only wanted to hang with her. Like, I had a small part. I worked two or three days, and I just wanted to be with Dolly. And she spreads her dollyness, like everything that's magical about I love when I come across people in show business who have this thing, and they're beloved, and they're iconic, and they really deserve it. They're everything you want. Ted Danson, the best guy. Like everything you hope Ted Danson is, he is. And Dolly Parton, same way. I got goosebumps. I love Dolly Parton. Speaking of that, you were also a co-host on The View. I was a co-host on The View. A yes. couple of times, couple including of times. when Willie Nelson was there. Yes, another. But Willie Nelson, I mean, I would have loved for Willie to go, Jeff, let's be friends. Come down to Austin, you know. But he was so warm, and I got a shot. Oh, you know what? Just reminded me. I have a shot of Willie. I got to find in my uh, Adobe Lightroom. Uh, and I got to find it because that would be great in the show. Are you coming with me? Kelbo? Uncle Kelbo! Yes, it's me, the responsible adult while your parents are away on their romantic vacation. This is, I was, it's one of the, the proudest nights of my career. First run, Wizards of Waverly Place, playing Uncle Kelbo, their uncle, the wizard, and I was on Law and Order, I think, uh, SUV, and I was a rapist and a murderer. Same, same night, same night. And I'm like, look at you. Who's got range? Who's got range? That was like right around your, when your kids are probably like 10 or 11. Yeah, they loved yeah. that I was on Wizards of Waverly. My ch children had some, you know, cool stuff with me. Because I love doing, my favorite thing to do is either really adult work, not porn, but uh, uh, adult work or things for, for children. I've been in two Toy Stories uh, Cars 2, and my, the thing I'm most proud of in my career, Wally. -E. I play the captain of the ship. Ah, Otto, you are relieved of duty. Why is that the thing you're most proud of? Well, that, first off, I worked three years on that movie. My voice became what it is today because of that movie. Now, back to why I'm 
proud of Wally is because I think it's one of the most brilliant, magical, special things. Pixar hits it to where it's greatness for everyone. It actually is brilliant. Wally, I worked three years on it, never saw any of the film, never saw anything until the premiere. And at the premiere, I, w I, start, I was crying because I couldn't believe I was in something so beautiful. And I think that movie's beautiful. That's all. It's, and it's the most human thing ever. Pixar makes movies the way Charlie Chaplin made movies. Charlie Chaplin would shoot his movie and then shoot it again and then shoot it again. He owned the studio. So he kept on going at it until it's perfect. Pixar, they make the movie half a dozen times before you see it. And they're, they're tough on one another. They're harder on each other at Pixar. Because I've heard the stories from all the creatives there. If only all of show business were that self-critical. That's why the special, I was really hard on myself and had people helping me to be critical before it, I ever even filmed it. I have my first photography show at the Leica Gallery. Leica has already approved about 25 photos. Um, and I said, great, but I've already replaced five of those photos, and I'm still going through my photography and making adjustments and pulling stuff out and going, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. Because if I do that, I, I, I hope to have some semblance of success being that tough.